Hi. Ceramic palettes, they are everywhere at the moment. I've seen lots of people making them, selling them, all in varying levels of different shapes and sizes, and they're all so beautiful. In fact, I have my own palette from Ruth Pike Ceramics, which is a splash one, and it's beautiful and speckled, and I absolutely love it. But I kind of wanted to give it a go making my own. I don't have access to a kiln. Like many people, kilns are pricey and large, and I don't have one. So I decided to give it a go and make my own out of Das air drying clay, um, the clay that's for all ages, <laughs> and yeah, it, it's um, it's good in many ways, but also has its flaws as well. So yeah, let's see how I did at making my own palette. Roll the tape. <laughs> so I'm gonna make some space, and this is my little bowl of water. I've got a rolling pin and I also got some grease proof, grease proof, which I'm going to use to protect this surface I'm working on. Okay, so my plan is I want to create a small little palette. God, everything is white. I'm so sorry. Um, oh, can I even open this? I'm really bad at I'm actually very weak. These Windsor & Newton palettes are perfectly fine. I'm just very, very weak. Yeah. Mm. There. This is a bit of a state, obviously. I don't look after this very well. So I would like to create this as a palette, as a ceramic palette, because one, I think it's really nice to have the little dips to put the paint in. Two, I like having the section here. And also I think, it, I, I, for me, this is kind of an iconic thing for me. I've always had this as a kid. So I thought it'd be really nice to have a ceramic version of it. Let's get, making. I have some tools that I bought, like a very cheap set of tools. Oh, this clay is so weird. I forgot how weird this was. Das is kind of like doughy. It looks very strange. Well, I don't think I'm going to need loads. That should be enough. It's already under my nails. Ugh. Look how like papery it is. So um, even though it's not real clay, I'm still going to do a bit of kneading <laughs> in the air. There's that. I'm now going to roll it into a sh not too thick. I don't want it to be too thick because it's going to take a really long time to dry then. So... <laughs> I do know what I'm doing, guys. Okay, I don't want to go too thin though, because I do have to dig out the grooves. That's my plan, is to dig out the grooves. And I don't want to go too big either, because the whole point of this is that it's a little palette I can use. My other palette that I have from Ruth Pike Ceramics is beautiful and big, and I want to use that when I'm doing lots of painting and lots of colors. But this is just really for like tiny things. So, yeah, that actually fits. I'm gonna actually probably use this as a template. Feels like a smart move, do you not think? I would use a knife, but I don't have one knocking around. Apart from, well, I do have this. Should we use this? It's a Leatherman. <laughs> Be careful if you're using knives, guys. I've had this Leatherman for years. It's uh, one of my favourite things back when I did model making for film and TV and things like that. And I studied it at uni. Multi tools were just so useful to have. Got everything on them. This is not an endorsement for Leatherman. I'm not being sponsored, but if Leatherman did want to endorse me for any reason, just hit me up, guys. Don't worry about it. I'll sort you out. Because <laughs> I love Leatherman. Oh, my head's in it. I'm sorry, I've got to see what I'm doing. Enjoy a streak of blonde for a very sharp moment. Get rid of these bits. Oh, that's fun. It goes, yeah, it's a little bit smaller in one area, which is cute. This should be interesting. 
Okay. Obviously, that's not the best thing to use your Leatherman for anyway. Right. When you are working with this clay, any excess, you'll want to cling film it off. It does... It. So, fun fact for everyone in regards to cling film. Cling film is not air sealed. You will dry out whatever you've done. So, for example, if you wrapped up clay, the clay in cling film, or I guess some people call it saran wrap, I don't know. Cling film in the UK is actually kind of breathable. You wrap something in it, it will not remain airtight. Air gets in. If you want to keep it actually airtight, put it in cling film, then put it in a Tupperware pot. Way more likely to last longer that way. Or use um, food baggies, and they're actually reusable. You can wash them, so definitely a better option than cling film anyway. Okay, that's my cut out thing. My hands are already disgusting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark off the areas that I'm working with. So I'm just gonna put it like there. And actually what's kind of cool is, does it have the markings on the bottom? Oh my gosh, it does. Okay, let's definitely use that. Let's use that here. Ready? Okay. Has that worked? Kinda, yeah. That's cool. It's not the actual markings, obviously, because that's going to be bigger than you need them to be, but we're working with something that's not going to be very realistic. It's just going to be close. All right, so it's about there. I'm probably going to speed this bit up because I'm going to be really fussy. So this section needs digging out quite a lot now, which I won't really be able to do with anything here. I'm gonna to have to actually dig it out. So what I'm gonna do is score my lines, dig out the whole piece, and then um, insert the little strips into it before it starts drying too much. And then we should be nearly done. definitely better okay I think I'm happy with that for a palette when it goes completely white I think it's gonna look a lot nicer than um, it currently does in its sludge gray form it's a little bit wonky there's edges that are like a little bit interesting but 
Once it's white, it shouldn't show up as much either. She says, not having a clue if that's true or not, but anyway. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this dry for a crazy amount of time. So for me, it's gonna be probably a week or so, and for you, it's going to be not very long at all. So yes, look forward to seeing in the very next clip that it is dry. Cool, it's dry now. So as you can see, the back looks pretty bad, but to me that doesn't actually matter. I'm not selling this or anything, it's just for me. And also, um, it has bowed a bit, so from the drying process, as you can see, it has now got a curve on it. After doing some of the tests I've done with clay, you can get it flat, but I think... So for example, um, this one I made uh, as a little tester, it's uh, it lies flat completely. So I think what it is, is the larger the piece of flat clay, the more likely it will bow. Or it could have been because I dried it on some something else I don't know basically I'm not 100% sure why this bowed over other things but I'm assuming it's because it's a larger piece of clay so things just bow when they're bigger I guess so what I'd like to do is try a little bit of sanding very gentle sanding on the edges Okay, so it is now dry mostly. There's a tiny patch here where I got some soy sauce on it because, yep, that's that's what today's like. So I'm gonna be using this, which is Deco Art Triple Thick Brilliant Brush On Gloss Glaze. I got it from Amazon because that's where I could find it. It was about 12 pounds, but I've used it for loads of things now and um, yeah, it's really good. It was recommended to me on an article, the article that I think I told you about earlier in this video. So the, as I said before, the information will be in the bio. It is very thick and I would, I've tested how many layers I should do and one is fine, but I like to do two, just in case you miss any little bits. The paint will find it. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I just use an old brush and I also have some water. Um, this is water soluble, so it will wash off your brushes really easily. Just be careful of little bits of dried gunk on your brushes going into your glaze. But yeah, so um, I'm gonna start brushing it on. It's very easy process. I would say you should do the back as well, because even though you've seen loads of pottery where they have it completely bare on the back. That's because it's been fired in a kiln. That's a different process. This is going to get damaged by water and stained and different things like that. So um, I would recommend covering the whole thing because air dry clay is notorious for not being waterproof. And so, yeah, I would definitely do the back. Even with just one coat is fine, a nice thin coat will do the job just in case you put it down in some water or accidentally got had some paint on your hands it's just easier to clean up so yeah definitely do the back so it is now nice and dry and finished so yeah here's the original inspiration for it i actually gave this palette a clean because it was a complete mess before but yeah uh, the clay palette was a little bit wonky it didn't sit flat so I stuck a little bit of cork on it with super glue and now it rests level on the table which is good because that would have annoyed me quite a lot I think it's really nice I'm quite happy with it it's very cute and um, yeah I did actually make some other palettes and pieces and bowls as well so I'll show you those a bit later on but yeah let's give this a go let's try painting with it. Oh. Um. 
this little painting and yeah not really much to say about it I just wanted to do something that showed what I did this Christmas and yeah I clean up the palette and as you can see there's some little bits of color still left in the corners I quite like it actually I think it makes it look more ceramic-y but yeah I don't mind it at all I did try using a sharp tool to scratch it out, but that's a risk because the glaze will also scratch off. So yeah, all in all, very happy with it, very cute. I also took some clips of other pieces that I made, and so now you can see this. I thought I'd show you some of the other palettes that I made. Um, so there's this one, which uh, was using this plus clay that I found. I will have a link in the bio for um, the clays that I used. This one does actually dry this weird kind of grey beige colour. So yeah, as you can see it quite clearly there. I could have painted it white if I wanted to, but I don't want to use up loads of white paint and it might have changed the texture. So I just did some little speckles in some acrylic gouache to make it look kind of like a speckled -y egg effect which worked out quite nicely i have painted with this already and it works really well so this is it cleaned up and the glaze eventually does go a bit matte after lots of cleaning but um yeah it, it it's pretty good for uh, air dry clay i've also made some little ones out of the das so this is just a little disc i put a hole in them in case i wanted to hang them at some point but i'm not really sure if i'm going to i made a little mini one if i just needed to apply one color or mix one colour, I thought that was quite cute. I made a little bowl which is for sharpenings. I actually weirdly can't find my sharpener right now, I think I'm going to need to buy a new one. But I thought I'd give it like a sh oh, sharpening pattern. This is made out of the plus clay again. I made some little pots, this is I think the plus clay again. Um, so I just did some painting on it because I'm just trying to cover up that horrible grey. And it turns out really cute. Um, did some weird divots on it and stuff. The bottom has been glazed just to stop it from getting too grubby. And I use it to store my little colourful leads that I have. So that's quite nice. I need lots of little pots for all my little bits and pieces. Made this little pot. I think this is again the plus clay. I had quite a lot of it. Um, which uh, I just painted it entirely turquoise apart from some bits and pieces and I use it for my mechanical pencils so yeah it's got a little I put a little strip here to seal where it joined because this stuff doesn't join very well um, so it does join well enough but I, I found that it wasn't as good as the das for joining so yeah I made these which are little palette squares this one I use the bottom of the paint pans like I did in the other one um, as you can see that it comes through a little bit but I think it's really effective so if you want to make something really simple and this is using the DAS this is really effective and simple to do and it doesn't require much skill other than a straight line using a ruler and the bottom of a watercolour pan so that worked really well but I also made some other ones with holes in which are just very simple little strips which I just use for mixing and I've used, I haven't used them yet actually, but they'll be fine. And the final thing is this little, little apple that I made, which is for holding a paintbrush, like this. A paintbrush. And I did it because I had a ball of clay left over, so this clay had been a bit 
squished a lot around by that point. It wasn't the best quality, so there's some rough edges. But I really like it. I think it's really cool. It's got like two layers of the glaze. I added a bit of a sh paint shine to it. And um, I think it's really cool. This took, I want to say like a week to dry, but I did leave all of this to dry for like a week and a bit. It's not perfect, but if you want some cute things that you can make, then um, acrylic does work well on them and the glaze is fine with acrylic. I can't promise all paints work well with this, but the acrylic wash was fine. It's quite expensive paint for this. I used very small amounts. So I would recommend using a cheaper acrylic paint, but make sure you do your tests with the glaze on something small before you do it on your very fancy stuff. So yeah, all in all, I'm very happy with what I made. I think everything turned out really cute. So yeah, let me know what you would make with clay if this has inspired you to make anything for yourself. Hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great week and uh, subscribe and like and all those wonderful things which will help me grow my small little channel. And yeah, speak soon. Bye.